Congratulations, Coach. Oh, good day. Yes, sir. Once again, good afternoon. We'll start the Illinois press conference with an opening statement from head coach Brad Underwood. Go ahead, coach. Yeah, what a great feeling. Um, my my hat's off to Wisconsin. Um, why are they good? Uh, they'll make a lot of noise. Um, you know, when you when you're part of something that's really special, and that's this league. Um, when you accomplish something like this. Uh, you look, you really appreciate it. You don't take it for granted. This league's very, very good. Um, to come here and 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 have th three games that were all a little bit different, um, and then to have the confetti fall at the end, I couldn't be prouder of these guys. And uh, uh, I'm glad they get to experience uh, that feeling and 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 hoist that trophy. And uh, we talk about it a lot of you know a lot. We don't take this tournament for granted. And, and we're coming here to win and play. And I thought the game was uh, as good a college basketball game as you want to see, ebbs and flows. And, um, you know, we just happened to make a few plays down the, down the stretch to pull away. Thank you, Coach. We will start with questions for the student athletes. First question right here in the front row. Coleman, feels like he's playing some of your best basketball right now. How do you guys feel? What do you think you show going to yourselves and everybody else going into the NCAA tournament? Uh, I feel good right now. Um, I feel like I, I, I still could have played better this tournament, uh, shooting the ball. Uh, I feel like uh, we did. We made some crucial adjustments uh, in all the games we played, uh, and, and that's what won us these games, and that's what it's going to come down to in March. So, um, you know, just staying ready for whatever po opponent we have next uh, and, and staying dialed into those details and being ready to – make adjustments on the fly whenever we need to um, because, you know, we only got one shot now, uh, you know, and if we lose, we go home. So just staying dialed in and staying attention to details is, uh, is what's going to take to win. So Next question, middle, second row. Uh, Marcus. Marcus, you come here for one year. You get one chance to kind of do all this. What's this mean to you to get this moment in Minneapolis and have all the confetti falling? Yeah, it means everything. You know, my college career, I haven't haven't gotten a ring yet. So to come here and get the ring, uh, you know, this is the conversations, the visions I had with Coach during the recruiting process, and, and we came here and got the job done. Right here in the front row. Go ahead. For Marcus, you, you struggled shooting the ball the first couple of days. Not so today. Just, just finally getting adjusted to the ball or the court or shooting backgrounds, or what was the difference today? Uh, you know, it's just basketball. You know, people have off nights. You know, Steph Curry has off nights. And when I have an off night, I just remind myself that, you know, Steph, the greatest shooter ever, has off nights. So, you know, it's just on to the next play, next possession, next game, and, and you just keep playing with confidence. Next question, second row. Coleman, what are your immediate thoughts in being able to bookend your career with your freshman year winning this title and then your senior year being able to do the same thing? Uh, it's great because, uh, you know, I feel like, I feel like these last four years, we have we haven't been labeled as the best team in the Big Ten. But at the end of the day, after every year, we always end up being the best team in the Big Ten. Uh, so it means a lot, uh, despite of what people may say. Um, we, we, we put a lot of time and effort into trying our best to win. And it means a lot, um, especially staying here for four years and um, getting this job done tonight uh, feels really special. It, just, it, it means more when, when you stick around and do something for four years and you're familiar with everybody on the staff and um, all the changes that have happened. You know, you've seen so many changes. It, it just means more. So I'm super proud of everybody. Question here in the front. Hi, Maya Flacky with Gopher Hole Coleman. I saw you signing autographs of the fans. How important is that to you to take time to talk to fans? Yeah, that's really important to me because, you know, they they spent their time, um, their money to come out here and come support us. Um, and, you know, I've I've always been that little kid and wanting to get an autograph from from college or NBA players. And um, and I just don't want to be the guy to blow them off. So. Uh, obviously, it was a timely thing, and obviously, if, if I had more time, I would have stayed out there and interacted with more fans, but that definitely means a lot to me. Question in the back. Coleman, Coach always talks about this team being the most connected team to be coached. From you being here for so long, what, what's the thing that makes you the proudest of this team? Say that again, the last part? Proudest uh, of this team. I'm sorry. Proudest oh. of the team. Um, I think 
the thing that makes me proud is I feel like there's there's just a difference. Like Klesman hit two big tough threes, and no nobody hung their head. Uh, we came down and and we scored the ball, and then we ended up getting stops. And I feel like I feel like sometimes in my career there's there's been moments where those threes would have just destroyed everything and we would have lost that game because we weren't connected. But tonight we saw the end result. Um, you saw nobody hung their head. We kept playing. Um, you know, we made some mistakes, but we were able to keep playing. And ultimately we played hard and we're able to get a win. So uh, we haven't, nobody's quit on anybody. I'm super proud of all the adversity we've, we've gone through, whether it's from Marcus in the summer uh, with his hamstring, uh, me all year with my knee, Quincy's wrist all year, um, you know, um, off the court things. Um, we've, we've all stuck together and, and we've done a really good job of just being together. So two final questions for his student athletes here in the front and then the second row. Marcus, what encourages you most about how you guys played this week? Is it coming back from the deficits? Is it a certain way you played? What, what do you think it was? Yeah, I would say, uh, just our fight, you know, there were a lot of times where it would have been really easy to fold and just you know, kind of pack it up and, and accept defeat. But, you know, every time out, we just had the same message that we weren't going home, we weren't losing this game, and, and we just came together every single time. So I think just our ability to to push through stuff that, you know, we didn't have planned, we didn't want to get down 10, but, you know, our ability to just, just keep fighting. Last question, second row. Uh, Colvin, this is for you. Uh, Wisconsin counterpunched as well as any team you guys played against in the tournament. What did you see that was different from them, and how did you guys overcome their ability to rally against you guys? Um, it's funny because I told the guys in the locker room after we beat them in Wisconsin, I said, I wonder why Chucky Hepburn isn't so aggressive. I feel like he's one of the best players in our league. I felt like the first game he wasn't that aggressive, but tonight uh, we saw him be a little bit more aggressive coming off those ball screens, choking his motors, uh, choking his motor, getting to his spots, um, passing the ball well. And I think if he if he plays the way he plays tonight and all tournament really, you know, toughening out through uh, that leg injury, I think he had. But uh, I think when he's aggressive, uh, I feel like they're a really good team. Um, and I think that was the biggest thing tonight, uh, his, his aggressiveness um, for sure. And uh, Stephen Crowell was in the game. Uh, he was in foul trouble when he played them up at Madison. Uh, and so he's a he's a he's a big piece for them as well. So thank you, Marcus Coleman. You can head back to the locker room. Go get a bigger piece than that. I got you. Questions for Coach Underwood right here in the front. Brad, what, what encouraged you most about how your team played this weekend heading into the NCAA tournament? Resiliency. Um, toughness, fight. Um, it was um, uh, it was a little bit different every night. I love that. Um, it was um, uh, a, a great defensive second half yesterday. The the one yesterday, I thought today it was swings and emotion and 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 really really good offense. And you know you shoot sixty two percent today in the second half. Um, you know, I thought that um, um, we got through kind of the first game, maybe a little nervousness and a little sloppy, but uh, but yeah, it was it was you, you're going to have some of those, and um, I just love our resiliency today. Question right here in the second row. Go ahead. Three double-digit deficits in three days, Brad. What'd you learn about your basketball team this weekend? Well, I didn't like it. But, um, yeah, you know, it's, I, I think it's a long game. I, don't, I think there was no panic. Um, you know, I thought we stayed the course. Um, uh, you know, I thought today one of the biggest things was, you know, we, we made a switch. and We went really big, um, you know, playing Dane. And I thought that impacted uh, uh, put Coleman on, on store, um, and, uh, which he did a terrific job on. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's just the, the variety of ways that we – think we can play and have to play and and um like i said it, it was um uh kind of a little bit all over the place that in terms of our our who did it and how we did it right here yeah. brad looking forward to, to next week how do you balance when you're preparing in general 
uh, between a cautionary tale of, of learning from some of the relatively early exits in the last few years and just saying, you know, well, those, those are in the past and, and moving forward and not worried about it. Yeah, so there's much. very few guys that there's very few guys that know anything about the past. They're living in the moment. Um, you know, it was we didn't talk one second about coming to the Big Ten tournament and getting beat last year in the, in the first round. Um, it, you know, every 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 team has its own identity. Um, this this team's no different. We'll dive into Moorhead State uh, here in about an hour. And as soon as we get on that plane and um, and, and we'll prepare um, for the postseason, the regular season is over and the Big Ten. And thank goodness we don't have to see another Big Ten team for for a while. But uh, um, but, yeah, we got to go prepare and we'll we'll um, we'll put a bow on the on this with a with with the ability to carry the trophy in the oven practice facility. Second row. Uh, Coach, I'm sure you've seen the photo. It was viral last night. You in the tub with all the players. Um, can you walk us through that photo and also just how comfortable you feel with these guys right now? You get on them during the game, then you able to have those kind of moments after. Well, I was really impressed. I didn't know I looked that good with my shirt off. Um, I actually cold tub every day. Uh, we're fortunate we've got it. Got one in in our practice facility, and so I'm a I'm a big fan. But uh, a few of the guys called me out the first day. And, uh, you know, had to go in and, and, and really show them that even though I'm a little older than them, I'm still pretty tough because none of them can go dunk all the way under and hold their breath for 10 seconds while I can. So I had to show them that um, the old man's got a little toughness to him. Question in the third row. Brad, I'm, I'm jumping ahead, but you haven't been to the Sweet 16. Illinois hasn't since 05. Everybody's, you know, going to be burning for it. And I want to know how much you – you know, really burn for that check to well, check that, you know, off. Your, it's not about checking you know. the box. I came here to win a national championship. If you think that's all I'm trying to get to, um, we've had, we've had unfortunate draws. I think we've had some tough draws. Um, you can be, I think every, every program has had those moments where you, you, you get upset. You uh, maybe don't play as well. You know, we had the, the year with Trent with pink eye, Jacob Grandison out an injury. I think we're going in in a place we're as healthy as we've been, and we're playing well. And uh, so this this team doesn't know anything about any of that. I'm here to try to win a national championship, and and Illinois is that type of program. And um, I, I, I I tell Josh Whitman, our athletic director, Chancellor Jones, that every time I see him, we are here to win a national championship. And if if those goals ever change, and I probably don't need to be your ball coach anymore. And uh, in the meantime. That's that's our goal. Not just get to get out of the first weekend. It's to keep moving on. Question right here, Coach. Obviously, Terrence and Marcus are your go-to guys offensively. We we saw some major bench production offensively this week from Dane and Luke and some others. Just how important is it going to be for those guys coming off the bench to produce moving forward in the tournament, even with Terrence and Marcus still doing their thing? Yeah, it's it's a nice. You know, Coleman didn't have a great tournament offensively. But, you know, he's a guy that had 30, uh, you know, a few games ago. Uh, you know, I thought Ty Rogers had an, an unbelievable tournament. He got in some foul trouble today. Quincy had an unbelievable tournament. Uh, I think we've got a lot of weapons. And, uh, you know, Justin Harmon's been a consistent double-figure scorer. I thought Draven Gibbs gave us something today. So uh, I like this group. I like the fact that uh, you can push some buttons and play some different lineups and have, have a little um, – have the ability to be different if we need to be. So I feel, I feel good about that. We have time for three quick questions right here in the second row. Uh, Coach, you mentioned uh, being different. Uh, this roster is built with a lot of positional flexibility and guys who can switch a lot on screens and sw switch defensively. How do you think that helps you prepare and be ready for success at the next level? Yeah, we have our base foundation. Uh, you know, we, we made a change in the second half tonight where we, we did start switching. Uh, you know, for, for a lot of the game, we wanted to try to keep Terrence uh, on AJ. Um, and then Chucky got going and we made a switch and put, and put TJ on him uh, put, and slid Coleman over. So that, that, that helps. Uh, we went to, to, a, to a lot of five-way switching late. Um, that gives us some adverse or some uh, uh, flexibility, I should say. And, uh, um, but yet, it, 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 you know, we have the ability to keep a really good defender um, yesterday's a great example, keeping 
Ty on Kase, uh most of the or TJ on Kase most of the game. So uh, I like our I like our diversity on that side. Follow up right here in the front, Brad. How do you reflect on cutting nets in the Big Ten three out of four years? Special. I feel good. I mean, it it, it is it is so many people, and it's you know I, I say this: coaches win games, administrators win championships. And that's a fact. You go come look at our facilities, and it it it's not about what we do in a moment or what we do in a. It, it it's a lot of work. It's a lot of years. Um, I say it all the time: it's the best league in the country. Best coaches who have become great great friends. Uh, throughout, we compete like we compete like hell for forty minutes, and and yet we we all get along. Great players. Um, and to be able to do that, um, you know, in my opinion, it, it, it's it's pretty special. I like the, I like the fact that I think that's where Illinois basketball should be, and it's nice to um, uh, get it there and and keep it there. And uh, a lot of hard work, a lot of a lot of people behind it, a lot of good players, a lot of great coaches, uh, a lot of administrators and, and and support staff. Final question, third row, probably. Best this is last. I'd appreciate an answer. Terrence Shannon Jr., I think 102 points in three days, hottest player on the, the planet, but he's he's not at the podium after. He's not available in the locker room. As you go forward, the games get bigger, the stage, and if he keeps playing like this, I would assume it's going to become you know even more of a complaint from the media. Or, or Are you concerned at all about about where this is could head? Are, are you okay with it? How, to what extent can you kind of speak for Illinois? I'm great. Um, again, I, I'm the basketball coach, and and a lot of this stuff was um, uh, put in put in play by our, by our university, the courts, um, and uh, I'm not going to consume myself with it. I've I've got a locker room full of players that that um, you know. I said when he was when he was suspended, I was going to coach the guys in the locker room. He's in the locker room. I'm going to coach him, and uh, uh, it's a very serious matter. Um, he's got uh, representation, um, and uh, you know that that locker room is so strong that that whatever how hot he gets, we knew he was hot. He's a good player. He was hot before it happened. Um, that um, uh, it will be handled accordingly and with 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 great sensitivity and respect to, to everybody. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.